Honesty, the the apostle of GMS. Citation is to all the Akim is pushing this for the shooting the four cars the highway and byways. The work for the leg. Now, praise the Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. It's Proverbs 13, verse 4. It reads, Who hath ascended up into heaven and descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bounded the water in his garment? Who hath established all the end of the earth? The end, all the end of the earth. It says, What is his name? And what is his son's name? If those can tell. Right? This video titled this um, Yahweh is the creator name. Right? Because what we first gotta understand is that these scriptures was basically translated and transliterated, right? Because the origin of these language or the origin of these words came from Hebrew, right? Which went into Latin and Greek, right? But the original language these boys were written in is the Paleo Hebrew. You know? This is Isaiah chapter 4, the two beautiful verse. Eight. It says, I am Yah, I am the Lord. That is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to grave an image. Right, so it says in verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name. Now obviously we know the creator name can be the Lord, right, because he has a name. Right? And his name, just like the, um, the prophet and his son, first begotten son, they have meaning to these names. So let's look up the name of the strong. Let's look up where they got the Lord is in the strong to see what it was translated from. Right? Yeah, this is the, this is Isaiah 42, reading from verse 8. It says, I am the Lord. See up what the Lord is in Strong's H 3068. It's an origin. See in Hebrew writing. The origin. It's true. Hebrews read from right right to left. Right? So also we gotta um, acknowledge. So from the right the stroke was pronounced as Ya. The second one from the right is Ha. It's stroke in the middle, Wa. And the one at the end, Ha. But it's pronounced as Yahawa. It's pronounced as Yahawa. This transliteration, right, that they have here, this is, this is a transliteration from the Assyrian um, uh, characters, Hebrew. Right, basically, that they take and put vowels, right? Mm -hmm. They try to make um, vowel points to help pronounce these name, but the name was already plain as it is. Going back to the tetragrammaton. So, like they have here, Yehovah, right? Yehu, vow. This is good enough. Right in phonetic. And the DBD definition, Jehovah is an existing one. Yeah, because that's what the um, name means. Yahweh means he exists. Right? But they're going off in the pronunciation. Now, as to the letter G, it's only about 600 years worth of well it has here right? when you google um, let me get back here 
So you type in into Google how old is the letter G. So when we go in to read about it, it says I understand that the letter G is relatively new. Perhaps 400 or 500 years old. But since there has long be important names that we they said long be <laughs> there was not so long because if it if it did come about like around 400 to 500 you know going on 600 years how can it be right there as long be right that's not long right Reading on it says there has long be important names that begin with J, such as Jesus, Joshua, Justinian, etc., which predate in which predate in introduction of a special letter. Does that mean that the that the J sound predates the letter or were such famous names spelled and pronounced differently? Oh, we deal with the Hebrew because that's the origin. And the saying that these names was famous, but yet still, it's transliterated. Right? It's going off. Most times we find you switching um, certain information or translating any language into english it's it's it don't it don't share the same value of pronunciation right because the creator name the origin is hebrew that's his holy tongue his son's name yahushai who they were ignorantly called jesus his name was given in the holy tongue these were hebrew speaking people right the prophets also so the name should be and is only rightfully to say acknowledged in the or in the um, originated language right but this is what happened right it's a book of Malachi chapter 1. I'm going to read from the. Uh, verse 11. Malachi chapter 1 from verse 11. It says, From the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same. My name shall be great among the Gentile. That's right. <clears throat> His name shall be more great among the Gentile. Right, this is this is talking about the um, the Israelite, right? That was dispersed. You know who will go into foreign land and become unto like Gentile. Let's prove this quick. So this is um Baruch chapter three. Force eight. It says, Behold, we are yet in we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subjected to payment according to all the iniquities of our father which departed from Yahweh our God right here Israel right here we're talking to here Israel the commandments of life give ear to understand wisdom how happened it that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxing old in a strange country, right? Waxing old. And it means be here long, so till that we forget who we are, right? In a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead, 
Okay, the scripture say he that is without understanding remain in the congregation of the dead. And these na these nations, this world wasn't given to them. Right? It says that thou art counted with them that go down to the grave. Right? So we become land to Gentile. Right? Like these Gentile. So got another precept to bag this up. This first Corinthians chapter twelve. Reading from verse two, it said. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Because the name you find, Jesus, Jehovah, you know, Allah, and these names that are given unto the Mosai these days is after idols, right? Not according to knowledge. So going back to Malachi chapter 1, reading from 11, it says, For from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, shall be my, the going down of the same, my name shall be great amongst the Gentiles. That's the Israelites that has been scattered, right? That call themselves now um, American, West Indians, Cuban, Chinese, and these days that were scattered throughout these lands. We call her in the self after Gentile and not Israelite. Right? And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen. Said Yahweh of hosts. Right? Because we are among the heathens, right? So this is the offering that is being set. We can we we can come back to this knowledge and understanding, right? Verse twelve. But ye have profaned it, in that ye say the table of Yahweh is polluted, and the fruits thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. So basically, our forefathers, right? They were transgressing the word of Yahweh, right? The law, statutes, and commandments, even his holy places and the holy things, right? And defiling with um, these hedonistic customs. Right? Verse 13 it says, Ye said also, Behold, what a weariness it is, is it? And ye have snuffed at it, said Yahweh of hosts, because our ancestors being wicked. Right? They forgot Yahweh for who he was. Says, said Yahweh of hosts, and ye brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus ye brought an offering. So, so these these um ideologies and these custom of the heathens, these gentile, right, and of these idols, they brought these things are lame, and these things sick, these things you know, be torn. Meaning it is of no value, is not, is it will just lead on to destruction of our people, right? And yet they offering these things like the scripture says, Thou shalt not eat swine. Right? Leviticus uh, 11, um, 11 7. Right? But here you find that these pastors teaching people in, in the church to bless and eat. <laughs> right? And that's clearly going against scripture. How could you bless something unto the Creator, right? That He says is abominable unto Him. Even look, the homosexual man shall not lie with another man. Now you find the wicked of this world; they basically put in giving marriage on to. Um, they actually giving marriage unto them and praying that they should be blessed, right? Doing enough. Going on. Thus he brought an offer. Should I accept this of your hand? Said Yahweh. So he asked, Should I accept this? Right? This is a question he's asking. Verse 14. But cursed be the deceiver. Yeah, the people that are that teaching false. That the Father's name is Jehovah. The Son's name is Yahweh. Right, and these false things, right, and even 
and even the deceivers that we go into the other um land our leaders right the israelites who return these pastors you know and so on that but are putting our people right leading them to around in the wrong direction away from the truth right coming up with the doctrine of themselves meaning the doctrine of men right verse 14 but cause be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male and vow it and sacrifice it unto Yahweh a corrupt thing right because this doctrine and this deceit that they're preaching they're preaching it like if it's unto Yahweh right for I am a great king said Yahweh of hosts and my name is dreadful among the heathen so you see the name the name the heathens don't have it and we've been learning from these people when we were carrying to idols meaning carrying to this bond land into captivity that's who we've been learning for all this time these words of Yahweh Bashem Yashai we take their doctrine as they're teaching us these words and they themselves don't understand it and they won't teach the name of Yahweh because they know the means we understand is his name we understand his son name we understand they understand it with command to his elect. Right? So it says, my, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Right? <clears throat> they know not his name. Right? So the creator is serious about his name. We got the um, law. Exodus 23. Let me see. Yeah, this is the book of Exodus, and this is a law, right? <clears throat> this is the book of Exodus 23, and we do from verse 13. And it says, and, and in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect and make no mention, right, of the name of other God, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth, right. So this this basically going into pray, you know, praising these other God, right? Giving reverence to these idols, right? I mean, we call these names to edify our people, right? And to, and show to show them that these these names are wrong, you know. But these names shouldn't be on or out of our mouth, meaning we shouldn't give praises unto them, we shouldn't reverence them, you know. So this is the law. book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 it says for I am Yahweh right I change not right so people are saying that oh that was back then right the creator changed not his words still stand right therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed right so the creator never changed his name is still it still remains the same right <clears throat> still remains the same it's another thing to look up right where, where in history you can find the creator's name it, 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 it was engraved by our ancestors on the last lunas on the last lunar stone Right, 
this this right here this is the Ten Commandments written on these stones right that the natives they did um, they did put and this is long before the uh, <coughs> the invasion and the genocide yes the era of Columbus and so on Get this on. Just get this quickly. So, so you you to on. See what I'm saying? Mm. For your sanctification or for you? To uh, this in this video, I want these scholars. They, they um basically he went into the name, right, and the commandment, and to find right. And they, they pay their Hebrew, they create a name that's to show these people are deceitful and wicked. Right? Sanctify. How do you translate that? <laughs> it's actually the same thing. It's both. You're not supposed to say either or. You're supposed to see it as, as you sanctify it, you are sanctified. As you forgive others, you are forgiven. It's one and the same kind of thing. This is a neat kind of Hebraism. That you know, you're, which makes translating Ten Commandments a very difficult thing because it has that those turning points mm -hmm. for your sanctification or for you to sanctify. What is that? It's both. Mm -hmm. Neat. There is a there is the dot. It's back. You can feel it with your finger. It's harder to see than feel, but it's definitely there. The dot's there. So if you just saw an image of this, you might think you missed the dot that you see so clearly here. You might think you didn't make it very good there. Mm -hmm. It's definitely there, though. It's definitely there. Everywhere at an end and the beginning of another commandment, mm -hmm. you see that there. The end of a commandment. It's there. You feel it. La, there's another. You know, so everywhere the, there's an end to one, you have that little nook. La. And little nook. La. Sometimes it's very apparent. You can really see the dot. But up here, at the very top, you see that it, they're intended as periods. So here's the cool thing. That wouldn't have happened. That normally would not have happened. That you'd have a period out here. Normally you would never see that. Yeah. Except that he made a mistake here. So that dot right there should have been here. You see? Like yep. It goes from that commandment to the diacritic mark. Let's see this commandment. The dot. And then this commandment. Yeah. But because of that error, the dot was already placed here, separating these two. But here's an end that you've got to also say, stop. <laughs> That's the dot. Yeah. The dot isn't a start point. It is an end point. That is definitely established here. Normally you wouldn't see it. This one seems to have one too. It's the very end of it. And it seems to have one. But I'm wondering if somebody didn't try to make that because it doesn't feel like the other ones. This one feels like somebody tried to... Somebody came through and scra scratched it. Somebody came through and scratched to make it more apparent in the process of of exposing the inscription and trying to get it photographed. Somebody's come through here and tried to yeah. run something to make the letter stand out. And they did a pretty good job of staying within the lines and not messing up the original writing. But it looks like they came to... They came to the end here and expected there to be a dot that isn't, wasn't there. Because that's really the, 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 not like the others that are very definitely there. You can really feel the divot for them. I mean, you can even see the marks where when he, he's using a chisel and he's having to kind of star asterisk to get the effect of that dot. He's really having to 
bang out and he, he gets the starring kind of effect and they're all very definitely big and starred out not this one this one looks like somebody just took something and turned it like like you know take something and just twist it but it is interesting that that's not so <clears throat> basically in this um video we see there's the last one of stone he's talking about the um ancient hebrew because here upon the stone right go find the creator name with circle in red right from the right yeah that's in the paleo hebrew that's the paleo hebrew characteristics yeah ha wa ha yahawa right that's the um, ten commandments so the name of yahawah was always there it was always there See, there's another video with him, um, with him reading it, you know, see if we could. It begins, La, at the beginning, La. That dot exists between them. But he started, he did this, he wrote this line. The writer wrote this line. He wrote the top line, I am the Lord your God. They brought you out of a territory of limits and a house of bondage bondages plural of Abed servant servant Abed servant or whatever Im, uh, plural servants he wrote that then he writes the next one he puts it out there he puts it out there he writes the next one La Dasha the Ka Is there. 
Et Shem, Yehovah, the name of the Lord. Don't take up the name of the Lord. Yeshua. So, pronounce the name there, right? Because if we could pull it up, um, right? So there's no is our proof right is our proof that these people they are just wicked they just take the name of Yahweh out right <clears throat> it's a book of Luke chapter 12 reading from verse 2 it says for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed neither hidden that shall not be known right so these things were once hidden from us it's been known make known of un, unto us right and the name is unto all people in israel Let's see if we could get a um, couple more precepts This is um, Baruch chapter 4, reading from verse 4. O Israel, happy are we for things that are pleasing to Yahweh, to God, are made known unto us. Right? These things are made known unto us. Right? This is Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 147. Read from verse 19, it says, he shoot his word unto Jacob, his statue, and his judgment unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgment, they have not known them. Where is he Yahweh? You know? Right? There's also Romans chapter 11, reading from verse 7. Right? What then? At is Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election, meaning his chosen people, his election had obtained it, and the rest were blinded, according as it was written, Yahweh had given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. So the name of the creator is there, but it's just that these idols and so on were start unto our people. They would think that this is just a name made up and it's false. But yeah, how is the creator's name? You know? <laughs> so also the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 3. It says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of Yahweh without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou must, mightest be justified in thy sin, and mightest be overcome when thou art judged. Right? So, if you don't believe, you know, you're going to make the face of Yahweh without effect. This is 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. Talk no more exceedingly proudly because we were saying this, this singing these false sound now. There's no God like Jah, there's no God like Jehovah, then Jesus, right? These false names, the Allah, you know, these are not the name of the Creator, I nor need His Son, right? Talk no more exceedingly proudly, let not arrogance come out of thy mouth, for Yahweh is a God of knowledge, and by Him action are weighed. Right. This is Second Timothy chapter two. Slack your Timothy chapter 2 on verse 15 
It's a study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Right? But shun profane and vain babbling, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So you need to study, you know, to show yourself approved, seek out these things. Right? Because they're in the scripture. They are in the scripture. It's just that they, they call for in depth look, the deep things, you know, so sort out these deep things. Close out with this one. It's Deuteronomy chapter 2. Reading from verse 7, it says, Remember the days of old. Consider ye the years of many generations, way before letter J came about, way before these ideology, way before, you know, good dating back real old times, right? You need to look at these, these, these things before, because now this modern day, every information is just there as fact or as any theory, you know, is there as information just because the public or the society nowadays see it as something fit or see it as something true. But it's just based on man's vain opinion. That doesn't make it true. So it says in Deuteronomy 2, verse 7, Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. The elders, and they will tell thee. And so this is what they find. I say, Brachta Yahu, Brachta Yahu Shai, Brachta Yahu Bashem Yahu Shai. Shalom.